Hello and welcome to BLK Pediatric Practice. I am Dr. Ankit Parak and I work as a consultant in pediatric pulmonology, pediatric allergy and pediatric sleep medicine at BLK Center for Child Health, BLK Super Specialty Hospital, New Delhi and Children's Chest Clinic, New Delhi. So in this video, we'll be talking about foreign body extraction in children and we have already talked about how children manifest. So, what is the best modality for extraction of a tracheobronchial foreign body? So as we know, bronchoscopy can be either a flexible bronchoscopy or a rigid bronchoscopy. Now, previously, only rigid bronchoscopy was used for foreign body removal and flexible bronchoscopy was basically used for diagnostic purposes. But with significant amount of experience, a lot of centers have, do, have started doing flexible bronchoscopies for extraction of tracheobronchial foreign bodies as well. And as you can see that once a, a flexible bronchoscope is, is passed into the trachea or, or the bronchi, you can pass in various instruments like gomia basket, which can catch the foreign body and you can easily come out. And these are different types of instruments which we can use. The benefit of using a flexible bronchoscopy for extraction of foreign bodies is that it, it saves a lot of time you do not need to take the child to the operation theater because you can easily do these bronchoscopies in minimal amount of sedation in the PICUs, reducing complications and significantly reducing the cost. But there can be situations when you cannot extract a foreign body with a flexible bronchoscope and hence there should be a rigid bronchoscope which should be available to us so that we can extract that foreign body with the rigid bronchoscope. So this is a flexible bronchoscope and uh, this is a suction channel of the flexible bronchoscope and we can pass in various instruments which we have shown in the last slide through this and, and extract a foreign body. Now this is a small video of the child which we have already seen and I'll show you how a foreign body is extracted with a flexible scope. Now once we have localized a foreign body in the tracheobronchial tree, we can pass it in a dormia basket as, as shown in the video. And once the dormia basket is open, you can, you'll be able to see the wires of the dormia basket. And this dormia basket is used to grasp this foreign body and we, we, we can remove the, the bronchoscope, the dormia and the foreign body in total. Now, once this is done, uh, we go back and do a check bronchoscopy to see whether there is any other piece of the foreign body which is still left. As you can see, the right intermediate bronchus and the main bronchus are clear and there is no further foreign body which is seen. The rigid bronchoscope is a, is a set of uh, equipment made of stainless steel and it is available in various sizes. Uh, and this is the assembly of a rigid bronchoscope that we use. Now this rigid bronchoscope now has an optical forceps and now through this forceps, you can actually pass in your Hopkins lens telescope and everything can be seen and the foreign body can be extracted totally under vision, which was not possible with the previous systems which, are, which were available. And this is a, a peanut forceps, uh, which is usually required to extract soft foreign bodies, but you can have a, a, a hard forceps, uh, which can be used something like an alligator forceps. Now, a lot of times you actually require both instruments and I'll just show you an illustrative case. So one year old child who had history of choking after eating peanuts in December, as per the, the parents, the child remained well, was admitted in an outside hospital in February because of a wheeze, but did not settle completely. Now, again, in the end of February, this child started having strider, was referred to us in the end of March. Now, now this child came to us around 8 p.m. At that time, the child was quite sick, was having strider with respiratory distress, with low saturations and a weak cry. Now, if there's a weak cry, then we do understand that it is a subglottic foreign body and these types of foreign body require a rigid bronchoscopy. So this child was taken to OT. First, a flexible bronchoscopy was done to confirm. And as you can see, there's, there's a small foreign body which is lying just, just in the glottis. Now, we went ahead, did a rigid bronchoscopy and this was removed. But the funny part was that 
the anesthetist could not extubate this child on the table. And this child started desaturating the moment uh, the, the, uh, the anesthetist tried to extubate. So we again re repeated a flexible bronchoscopy to understand what was going on. And as, as you can see, this is the trachea. And as we come out, and as we come out, this is what was happening. So there was a large granulation which was seen in the subglottic area where the foreign body was actually stuck. So we required a combination of both rigid and flexible bronchoscopy to manage this child. This child was again intubated kept on steroids on the ventilator for two days. We repeated a flexible bronchoscopy after two days. The granulation settled down and this child was extubated and discharged. Now, this is another child where it was a metallic foreign body of, uh, or it was a pin which was there. Again, this was removed by a rigid bronchoscopy. So rigid or flexible bronchoscopy, the choice is, is basically left to the person who does it. Both require a significant amount of experience to do it. At our center, we use flexible for most vegetable foreign bodies and we limit ourselves to rigid bronchoscopy in children who present with either a sharp foreign body, a subglottic foreign body, or a foreign body which is significantly impacted. So flexible bronchoscopy under sedation and analgesia is safe and highly effective in retrieving pediatric tracheobronchial foreign bodies. Rigid bronchoscopy remains the choice for subglottic foreign bodies sharp foreign bodies, metallic foreign bodies, or impacted foreign bodies. So thank you very much for your patient listening.